let's take a few minutes to look at the file viewer in more detail. The file viewer attempts to view the data stream as a common file format. The following list of file types are supported for this. Image formats, video formats, audio formats, document formats, and compressed file formats. Files such as images and videos will open here under the first tab labeled File Viewer. For photos, click the Analyze button to see more details about the photo, including resolution, face and illicit image detection scores, and hash values. You can then jump over to the Metadata tab to see full metadata on the open file. In this example, we see EXIF metadata about the image file being displayed and can see that it was taken with the Motorola Nexus 6 device. So we can come to the conclusion that this image was taken with a phone camera, specifically the Motorola Nexus 6. We can also see the GPS coordinates of where that picture was taken. Viewing video files is easy with OS Forensics, especially if you are tasked with reviewing a large number of video files. When a video file is opened, OS Forensics displays a very fast preview of the video, then displays nine still frame images of the video contents. This helps investigators get a good idea of the contents of a video without having to watch the entire video. Should you need to watch the entire video, simply click on the play button. There are sound adjustment options, including a mute button. We've already gone over it earlier in the course, but keep in mind the video track information alerts you to any additional or hidden video tracks within the video file. Typically, most video players, or, or excuse me, typically most video files will just have one video track. Here's an example of the metadata associated with an Office document. We can see important information such as the creator, last modified by, create date and timestamps, and much more. Keep in mind it was metadata from a deleted and recovered Office document that ultimately helped po lead police to the BTK killer in Wichita, Kansas back in 2004. In addition to the OSF file viewer, you can also choose to open a file with the system's default program, as shown here, through the right-click menu. You can also choose to print a file to your local printer or print to PDF if you have an installed PDF printer. The hex and string viewer is one of the most underrated features of the tool. This is a very powerful tool to examine many file types with and is especially useful when examining files like memory dumps or page file.sys or hyperfill. The hex view displays the raw data bytes in hex. The starting offset of each line is identified by hex offset on the left margin. The byte groupings can be configured via the settings window. You can copy a highlighted portion of data in hex or ASCII and even perform manual carving through right-click options. However, the most used feature about this view is the ability to rapidly extract strings from the raw data. Click on the Extract button to locate ASCII and Unicode strings in the data stream. This process rapidly extracts strings defined by specific criteria under the Settings options. Once the strings have been extracted, users can review the data line by line, perform word searching, or choose from one of the many filter presets that are available. You'll remember this feature earlier in this course when we looked at the Memory Viewer module. Users can quickly choose to filter the results by file name, email address, URLs, GUIDs, IP addresses, phone numbers, and credit card numbers and even BitLocker recovery keys or a supplied word list. This is one of the quickest and easiest ways to obtain useful information from RAM dumps or other memory type related files. 
In addition to merely searching the extracted data using keyword searching and preset filters, you can also create a dictionary file from the extracted content. Simply right-click in the Extracted Strings pane and choose the first option to Export List to File. Then click the Save As Type drop-down box and choose Dictionary Files. To create a dictionary file with a .dic extension, you can use in the Passwords module of OS Forensics for decrypting password-protected files. It can even be useful for looking at files like executables. Here we see what appears to be a normal notepad.exe file after extracting the strings. Using the URL filter preset, we can see a backdoor redirect embedded in the executable. Let's look at the available user settings. Under the settings window, the user can control how information is presented as well as set search criteria for the string length. There's minimum string length. This refers to the minimum length of the string to be included in the extracted string list. There's a maximum string length. This value is the maximum length of the string to be included in the extracted string results. There's a repeating character limit. and This is the maximum number of repeating characters a string may contain to be included in the extracted string list. And the, ca the case change limit and the maximum number of case changes for a string to be included in the extracted string list. And finally, the include special character setting tells the extractor whether to include strings with special characters such as an exclamation point, uh, an at symbol, or the pound sign, etc. Under the search options, you can choose whether to search hexadecimal values or text, such as ASCII. You can also use the included regular expressions or add your own in the search pattern box. So keep in mind, string extraction is an incredibly fast and robust tool. It's great for memory images, including those process-specific memory images we talked about. It's great for the page file or hybrid file or swap file. It's great for looking at executables. It's a fantastic tool to deal with, with with even a phone dump and app database analysis from those and many other useful applications. Speaking of cell phone dumps, here's an example from a physical image taken from an Android mobile phone. Looking at the YouTube history.database file, I extracted some very useful information in a homicide case years ago. The extraction pulled out valuable search history from the YouTube app on the device. Search history such as this from a random application database turned over critical evidence in this homicide case.